Hello, hello, good afternoon everyone. You missed me, right? The twice this, this morning. I'm simply elated to welcome on stage Puneet Agarwal, who is the head of the development, uh, entrepreneur development program at Google. It is another example of how Google is committed to helping entrepreneurs worldwide, right? Because Puneet has been investing eight years of his life into helping entrepreneurs, just coaching them, spotting them, wherever they are around the planet, and, you know, training them, opening business opportunities, helping their startups, helping unlock all of their potential. Google Ventures has talked earlier today. We had Google for Entrepreneurs, who's our largest partner globally. Eric Schmidt was the main speaker last year at this conference here in London. And so it, the fact that we've got Puneet here, who has been spearheading this uh, program at Google for one year and a half already, just goes to prove that Google is really committed to helping entrepreneurs. He'll be talking about the insights that he has gotten for helping, from helping 10K entrepreneurs and great leaders. So without further ado, please give it up for Puneet Agarwal. Hi, everyone. So my name is Puneet Agarwal, and I'm here to tell you about the insights I've gathered from about 10,000 leaders. Those 10,000 leaders range from founders like yourselves, founders in Silicon Valley, across Europe, and the Middle East. One thing I've noticed is whether they're actually an early stage founder, or whether they're a late stage founder, or whether they're actually an acquired founder, there's actually things they have in common. And so the things I want to share with you are those common traits. None of these words I'll share with you are actually new words. You won't be surprised. This isn't earth shattering. You'll get your break soon. But what I'm hopefully going to share is a pattern of something memorable and something useful to take away. So the first question I ask any founder I'm coaching is, what kind of leader do you want to be? As a founder, as a CEO, what kind of leader do you want to be? No matter what they answer, whatever they respond, whatever they aspire to be, there are those things in common. And so we'll talk about those things in common. So the things in common are actually laid out into three different levels. The highest layer is visible. The second layer is your core layer. And the third layer is the base layer. The visible layer is actually the things that are visible, things you can hear and see. Really standard words, vision, communication, inspiration. So when I think of vision, vision to me is when a founder has a point of view, when a founder predicts the future, and when a founder says, I want to move this company towards that point in the future. It's really simple. I'm sure everyone here has a vision. The second part is communication. It's taking that vision and communicating it. Communicating it to two groups. It's folks internally and folks externally. So internal folks include your team, your direct reports, people around you, including yourself. Recommunicating that vision again and again and again to yourself. The external communication is how do you take that vision and communicate it to your stakeholders, your shareholders, your customers, and your suppliers. So we could actually stop right there. We could actually say, I know plenty of founders that can get a vision and communicate that vision. But that's not enough. All you've done is really tell somebody what you want. The third part is inspiration. Without inspiration, most leaders are just leaders by title. It's just a name. Inspiration is generating a following, creating followership where people are compelled to want to move towards your vision. By being inspirational, founders can actually allow their team to embrace that vision as their very own. So that's layer one. 
Layer two has two words that often don't connect to each other, risk and compassion. As founders, everyone in this room has actually probably taken a risk, a singular risk of leaving a company, leaving a steady paycheck, and starting a brand new company. The best leaders I've met make risk-taking a sport. They make it a habit where they do it again and again and again. It's part of who they are. But we want to make sure that we don't have risk-takers on the front covers of newspapers where they lack compassion. Unfortunately, we're in a world where we see that very, too, very often, where too many CEO founders have over-risked. So compassion isn't actually a weakness. Compassion can be a strength. It's possible to actually take risk and care for those around you. That's the core layer. The last layer, the base layer, has two really simple words which aren't often talked about in the workforce, but curiosity and love are part of who we are. Biologists and scientists talk about it's part of our DNA. Both curiosity and love have allowed humankind, our ancestors, to set sail and discover new lands. It's allowed them to discover new continents, new worlds. It's allowed founders to develop new products, new services, new ways of doing things. In my opinion, curiosity and love are the things that help the world go round. So the last piece, the eighth piece of this puzzle, is something every human has the capacity to do. And that's dream. To me, the ability to dream is the equalizer for all humans. From the day we're born to the day we die, from every human that's walked these halls and will hopefully walk this planet after us, we all have the ability to dream. But what separates the great leaders is not just their ability to dream or daydream, it's actually the ability to take their dream and align it, align it into a purpose, into a mission. So this isn't a gender statement. This, this statement is about wherever you are on this grid, whether you start with vision or whether you start with dream, you're going to find yourself in that middle. You're going to find yourself at the juncture of risk and compassion. If you are a dreamer and you're closer to love and compassion, you're going to have to find a way to take more risk, to jump over that, that bridge. If you're a visionary and it's easier for you to communicate and to take risks, you're going to have to find a way to jump over and be more compassionate. So, since I'm hopefully talking to a room of humans who are able to dream, if you are going to dream, I encourage you to dream big. And not just to be the leader you want to be, not just to create teams, because teams actually come and go, and it's not even to create companies, because companies, as we've seen, come and go too. In fact, if you're going to dream, dream big. Dream, dream big to something that lasts, a culture, a city, a movement. You might as well dream, dream big. So I'm going to leave you with three questions. These are three questions I ask every coaching client. Number one, what do you care about most? What do you care about most? Number two, how do you define success? Not what society defines, not what your peer group, not what the media defines, but how do you define success? If we take these two questions, the greatest leaders can wake up every morning and actually have clarity on why they care about the thing they care about most. They can also go home to sleep and celebrate the success of that day. 
the last question I'll leave you with is, what best next step will I take towards my dream? To break that down, what best next step will I take towards my dream? To do that, you need to know your dream. You need to know the next steps. You need to know the next best step. And eventually, you need to find a way to commit to your dream, because it's your dream. So thank you for listening. Um, good luck. And I'll be, actually be speaking, I think, in the breakout room about 4.15 if there's any questions. Thank you.